Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Castello, Board Certified Family Practice with CostelloWellness.com and Adventist Health Partners. And today we're going to talk about an amazing European study that followed men for six years on testosterone therapy and showed significant improvements in their diabetes and other parameters. So this testosterone study used a testosterone called testosterone undecanate. It's an injectable testosterone that's given into the muscle in the doctor's office about every 12 weeks. They had men who presented to the urologist's office were diagnosed with low testosterone and they had 651 men that they put in the study and they followed them for up to six years. Of these 651 men, there were 156 diabetics that they followed in the study and this is what's called a observational study. They did not intervene in the men's diabetes, they solely gave them testosterone therapy and they monitored their cholesterol and diabetes and weight over the six year period. Their diabetes was taken care of by their primary care doctor. In this six year study, they mon monitored multiple things. Um, in the men that had diabetes, there was actually 37 men who actually had pre-existing heart disease and they were also put in the study and none of them had a heart attack or stroke. They measured multiple things. The most amazing thing was over six years time, the diabetics who took testosterone had a average weight loss of 38 pounds. So within six years time, on average, the men dropped and they maintained a 38 pound weight loss from beginning to end of the study. Their hemoglobin A1C, which is a measure of diabetes, went from 8.1 down to 6.2, which is a 1.9 drop or about a 56 point average reduction in their blood sugar from the beginning to the end of the study. Waist circumference, so abdominal obesity associated with metabolic syndrome, was down four and a half inches on average in the 156 men that were diabetic taking testosterone. Systolic blood pressure dropped an average of 23 points on testosterone therapy. Diastolic blood pressure dropped an average of 15 points on testosterone therapy, not on additional medications. Cholesterol dropped 32 points on testosterone therapy with a significant improvement in HDL, the good cholesterol, and a decrease in LDL, the bad cholesterol, and a decrease in triglycerides. Lastly, a marker for inflammation called CRP. This is a marker of cardiovascular inflammation. Went from 3.1 to 0 0.7. If your CRP is above three, you have a two and a half to three-fold increased risk of a heart attack or stroke above and beyond all of your risk factors. So these men were three times more likely to have heart attack or stroke based on their CRP. At the end of the study, the average CRP was 0 0.7, which puts them in the less than half average risk as a marker of inflammation. Uh, they monitor liver function tests and we see fatty liver associated with diabetes and metabolic syndrome and liver function tests also reduced significantly during the study on testosterone therapy. What this means to me and to most observers that are interpreting this is, is that if you have diabetes and you have low testosterone, you are greatly treated and improved with taking testosterone therapy. Why would this be the case? Testosterone therapy makes you lean or you burn fat if you are um, have a higher testosterone. You may exercise more if you have a higher testosterone. You have more muscle mass if you have a higher testosterone. So multiple parameters of wellness, multiple parameters of disease are significantly improved with testosterone therapy. In the study, 156 men, 561 total, only two men dropped out in the study, and those men had developed prostate cancer, and we talked about this in another video. They likely had prostate cancer unrelated to the testosterone therapy, but it is a contraindication with prostate cancer. There were no dropouts for side effects. There were no dropouts because of heart disease or stroke or other abnormalities. So six years, very long-term, much longer than we've had experience in the United States. This testosterone and decanate injection medication literally just came to the United States this year, so it's available with your doctor. I would extrapolate and say that the gel, assuming it raises your testosterone, uh, implants and the shorter-acting testosterone are all probably going to have similar benefits. 
drawbacks to the study. It was an observational study. They did not track men's medications, so we don't know how many men added or changed blood pressure or diabetes or cholesterol medications. It was not originally designed as a diabetes study. It was just monitoring men on testosterone, and when they saw the changes in primarily diabetes numbers, they started to monitor these as well. Not all men were in the study for the full six years. Although only two people dropped out, some men started at the beginning of the six years and continued for the full six years. Some men started a year later, two years, three years. The shortest time that men were on medication during this study was two years. You had to have been on the medication for at least a year before they considered enrolling you in the study. What's exciting about that is that these are average reductions. So on average, men lost 38 pounds. So some of those men were only on testosterone for two years. Some of them were on it for six years. So the, if we had men just looking at men just at six years on therapy, we might have actually had significant improvements. So take home message, in my personal opinion, testosterone does not cause heart attacks, contrary to the TV commercials. Testosterone does not cause prostate cancer. Testosterone is and may be benefit for, beneficial for multiple parameters, diabetes, blood pressure, and cholesterol. Dr. Greg Castello, thanks.